Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for 11001001. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Star Trek Next Generation one episode at a time. In this video, I cover the episode 11001001. So in this episode, um, the Enterprise goes into pulls into Star base to get a refit they uh, get have their refit um, done by the binars uh, a species uh, that relies solely on the computer and so is very well advanced and uh, with computers and so they promise to uh, make the enterprise a uh, super advanced and doing so they introduce Riker to a advanced holodeck program where he meets a woman called Minuet who is the perfect woman for him that knows what he's going to say before he even says it and it's in a jazz bar so he gets in, trapped in there and has a lot of fun uh, Captain Picard eventually joins him and hangs out with Minuet. Well, meanwhile, the binars are actually using Minuet as a distraction um, because while this is happening, they fake an engine explosion so the Enterprise is uh, evacuated and uh, moved out of Starbase. And then the binars uh, take control of the ship and fly it to their home planet when Riker and Picard realize that there something's wrong and Minuet is distracting them. They go out to find the ship empty and on its way to Binar and they think that the uh, Binars have hijacked the ship so they plan to you know uh, self-destruct the ship um, and they uh, want to um, you know beam aboard the bridge and try to prepare for a huge fight but they find the Binars are just knocked out and dying by the time they get there so they cancel the self-destruct and find out that their whole world is dying because it's dependent on the computer that is malfunctioning uh, because of a passing supernova and uh, that they needed to download all this information onto the Enterprise D which ha had the only computer big enough uh, to do so and they had Riker and Picard there just in case they were unable to download the information back to the supercomputer on their world and so Riker and Picard do so and uh, save the lives of everyone on their planet and the binars that uh, hijack the Enterprise agree to return to Starbase to face the consequences of their actions. Meanwhile, Riker goes back on the holodeck to um, interact with the Minuet more and finds that she's gone without the binars enhancements. Uh, the holodeck program's just shallow and empty. Um, so... This episode is, it's all right. Um, I think I find the holographic portion of this story more interesting than the big goodbye. Now I talked about in the big goodbye how, uh, and I read actually uh, that originally this was written to take place before the big goodbye, but for some reason it was filmed and aired after the big goodbye which seems like a mistake because it's supposed to explain why the holotech has been enhanced in the big goodbye because of the enhancements that the binars did in this episode but because it takes place before the big goodbye or before this episode um it makes the enhancements the binars do to uh, the holodeck seem not that significant <laughs> um but i did like minuet as a character i thought her interactions uh with Riker was interesting and i liked how she was aware that she was a hologram kind of reminded me a bit of um Vic Fontaine <laughs> actually um although she didn't she can't she does come across as somewhat sentient but um as she's aware that they're on the Enterprise and what's going on but all that was programmed into her by the binars I don't know it does make it kind of gray when they find Moriarty the storyline with him being sentient with the which they'll do next season but here you have a sentient android <laughs> I mean holodeck character already but um in that case Moriarty wasn't supposed to. he was just programmed as a normal 
uh, run of the mill holodeck character, but then all of a sudden start figuring things out about the Enterprise, where it seems like Minuet was programmed with the knowledge of the Enterprise and what she was and stuff like that. Um, but I will have to be honest, I actually saw the episode, um, Future Imperfect before I saw this episode because as I talked about many more, many times on my channel um, I saw season 4 of Next Generation was pretty much the first season I saw and then later I went back and watched the other 3 seasons and so it was already where because in that episode um, spoilers for Future Imperfect but really <laughs> watching this you should have seen it by now but anyway in that episode Riker is and a uh, wakes up from what he thinks is the future, where he's the captain of the Enterprise, and he has a son, and he keeps asking everyone, "Oh, who's who's his mother?" And eventually, uh, the he they sh his son shows him a holographic or a recording of um, you know his wife, um, Riker's wife, that is Riker's son's mother. And it turns out to be Minuet. And that's when Riker freaks out. It's like, Minuet. That's when he realizes that this future is actually just a holographic program. Because Minuet is a hologram. <laughs> and cannot mother any children. And um, they were... we You know, there's a ruse that it was the Romulans. But eventually found out this is an orphan alien named Barash. And he was using uh, these um, sensor mind reading sensor devices to read Riker's mind, and in Riker's mind, Minuet was real. And uh, I think that's very that's very interesting and actually very consistent with this episode that Minuet was someone who to him was very real and someone that he loved very much. And so it's actually clever. I think, well, that's more to do with Future Imperfect, but it's clever that um, the, the computer, which is not perfect, mistakenly thought that Minuet was real uh, because she was so real in Riker's mind. And so when I first saw this episode, I already had that future knowledge of, who, of Minuet being a hologram, but I didn't know the context. It was interesting to watch this kind of to get the backstory of who Minuet really is and how he met her. And I think it actually, yeah, as I said, it makes sense. Uh, works for the story. I find her interactions with Riker and Picard very interesting. I think it's very clever how she tries to involve Picard in, in the conversation, but then she gets a bit too intimate with Riker, and then Picard feels out of place. And he's like, oh, you know what? I should really be leaving Three's company. But then she goes to Picard and it's like, no, don't go. We haven't danced yet. Oh, we could play the thing. And Picard it keeps rejecting her every time, saying, no, I'm not a dancer. I'm not interested. I really should be getting back to the ship. And finally she just grabs him and says, please don't go. And that's the alert that wait a second something is wrong here she is purposely trying to keep them and that makes not only Picard want to leave but Riker want to leave uh and they of course leave and find out that the Enterprise had been evacuated uh so that was cool I did really like that and I like those scenes um now the thing with the Starbase I do believe that this is the first time we see the same starbase used which was the space dock from star trek 3 the wrath of khan uh it's the wrath of khan star trek 3 the search for spock um and i think i talked about this uh, when i did my revisit for search for spock recently how that was the does the, that starbase space dock used and that movie would eventually become what they use for every star star base going forward, particularly in Next Generation. In fact, this is the same stock footage from Search for Spock that they reused for this episode, and they sort of changed it and altered it to put the Enterprise D in and made it so the planet in the background was not Earth, which is some generic blue planet. 
And then they used this same exact footage again in several other episodes. I'm trying to... I had the list before, but I lost it somewhere. It's like Ensign Row, uh, Remember Me, uh, and there was a few others where they just... They, whenever they visit a starbase, it's just this exact same footage <laughs> from this episode, which is just altered footage from Star Trek Three. That's a way to save money. And also, you know... That's a cool looking star race, as I men mentioned in my review for Star Star Trek Three. So I think it. I like the fact that they were using. It. In fact, the, we get a shot in this episode in particular of the Enterprise D moving into space dock from where you see from the perspective of the star base itself, when the people looking out the windows as um, the Enterprise is arriving. Very similar to the shot. In fact, this one can't be the same because it looks different. But it's very similar to the shot of um, in Star Trek Three, where the Enterprise is going into space dock, and you see people inside watching the Enterprise arriving. And I talked about then how, like, what a good touch that was, and how much I liked that scene, how much it added to the movie, to the feeling of the Enterprise returning home. And so I like that they do it again here. Uh, and it's funny, the the commander of the Starbase, um, I remember me and my sister used to refer to as the evil Picard, <laughs> because he kind of looks like Picard, but with a goatee. So he was like, it's the evil Picard. Um, and I was like, is that Picard's twin? <laughs> like, it does look kind of like him, and apparently it's actually this actor appear appeared in the original series twice before. Uh, I think one that I recognized him was the Mark of Gideon, where he played one of those, not the main annoying council member guy, but one of the background guys who beamed up to the Enterprise and back down again. Like I, I was like, yeah, yeah, that does look familiar. That's probably him, but that that is interesting. Um, and then, so we meet the Binars, who are an interesting species. Um, it is... Interesting that the whole um, concept of the binaries are, you know, dependent on computer and they work in pairs. They're very binary, but as far as their um, gender goes, apparently they are non-binary, which is they are binaries, but they're non-binaries now because uh, the um, starbase commander refers to them as neither being ladies nor gentlemen. And so implying that they are uh, without a sex or without a gender, at least. But I think it's replied like genderless beings. Um, so they're non-binary. <laughs> um, and so that's interesting. And of course, this is, you know, this is stuff that's been in science fiction for decades, but not really related to in, you know, modern day real life society until more recently. Uh, people identifying as non-binary, but here we see it in TNG, and this is something Denise Crosby pointed out when she reviewed this episode recently for the seventh role. Uh, so that's interesting, and I do like the binars as a um, alien. They're very interesting, um, like the way they communicate and, and just, and how, you know, they're very short and, uh, um, that they needed, needed their help to save the world. Like, the, and yeah, so I think I liked them. There was definitely an interesting aspect of the episode, but I totally did not buy their stealing the Enterprise. And in fact, at the end, they tried to explain this away with uh because the first question Picard asked which is a very legitimate question after they find out that they needed their help to save the world it's like why didn't you just ask and they like talk to each other in a high-pitched you know frequency their native language uh really fast and then they turn back to him and says you might have said no and um and then Picard points out but the chances are very very high we would have said yes and they were like, oh, our need was too dire to take that chance. Eh, 
<laughs> bullshit. I'm sorry. I call bullshit. And then Riker tries to explain this away, but oh, see, they're binary. They just see things in simple binary, yes or no. Uh, um, which, again, bullshit. I, I, I call bullshit in this whole motivation. The real reason why they didn't just simply ask the Federation is so the plot could happen, so the episode could happen, <laughs> so they could have a threat and heck could have a plot. And they, there's a lot of things about their plan which doesn't make sense to me. Like, we f first of all, and this really grabbed me this time I watched it, is when v they, the Binars purposely kept Riker there so that um, they could, so that he could save their planet in the case that they were too inca incapacitated to complete the mission. Yeah, he didn't, they didn't leave Minuet with the instructions telling him how to do so, and so they had to figure out what this code was, the 11001001. Um, why didn't they just fucking tell him? <laughs> like, even Picard points out, it's like, oh, this is something that they, they want us to know, so it should be obvious. I'm like, well, they should have made it even more obvious. Like, what if they weren't able to figure out the code and everyone on their planet died because they weren't being, because they were being too fucking coy <laughs> with Riker or not dumb enough to program Minuet with it? But that's actually not the thing that bothered me. The big thing that bothered me that I noticed that was a huge plot hole was when R Riker goes in to input the code, the 11001001. It doesn't work. And then Picard was like, oh, they always work in pairs. And so Picard sits in the seat next to him and puts it at the same time. Then it does work. But, if you would recall, they never intended Picard to be there. Uh, Minuet explains uh, outright when Picard asks, because they said they created that program to distract Riker, to keep Riker there. And then Picard's like, um, oh, then what about me? How come, you know, how, what was your plan for me? And they were like, uh, we didn't plan for, you know, for you, for Picard to be there. You just happened to be, uh, you know, a, a good, you know, happy happenstance. It just so happened. So, <laughs> if they didn't plan for, for Picard to be there, what the fuck would they have done? <laughs> If he wasn't there, if it was just Riker alone, by himself, guess what? If you needed two people to input the code at the same time, they would have been fucked. <laughs> Their plan would have failed. And I just noticed that. I was like, huh. There, it just so happened, if Riker, if Picard didn't just so happen to show up, then they would have been screwed. What was and the whole plan was to keep Riker there. Of course, they didn't tell him him any of this information. Thankfully, like those fuckers are lucky they didn't all die. Like the whole planet didn't die because their plan sucked. <laughs> and say it with me now: the reason why their plan sucked is for um, so the plot could happen. Plot contrivance. So the episode could happen. That's all this whole stupid plan was. In actuality, they should have went to the Federation. Said, hey, <laughs> I think it's kind of like the whole planet dying. It's kind of like a important thing, you know. And, the, you know, their argument is, oh, we can't risk them saying no. Well, instead, you decide to risk it on this flimsy plan of stealing the Enterprise. Which, by the way, was late. And that's why they were all freaked out. It's like, you guys are a week late. What if the Enterprise was even later than that? Then they all would be dead. Their plan is worse than risk. Much was like a billion times worse than risking the Federation saying no, which is such a tiny... Ri like, of course they're not going to say no. Like, they're not going to be like, ah, eh, we don't give a shit, you all can just fucking die. They're not going to do that. <laughs> so this whole plot is on a house of cards that makes zero sense and is so contrived and it's just there to have this stupid episode could happen. Now, since I'm complaining already, let me get to the part where... Um, Picard and Riker, like, set the self-destruct, and they had this whole sequence that goes on for good, like, five minutes at least of them setting the self-destruct, and they're talking about, like, beaming into the bridge armed with phasers, and like, oh god, if you beam in, maybe they'll 
take you alive and, and so we you have to beam in as a distraction and they're like no we'll beam in together one part of the bridge and the other part of the bridge and that way they can't take us both and then they beam in and the binaries are just lying there dying <laughs> so the whole thing was a giant waste of fucking time and the whole thing about setting the self-destruct again was a waste of time uh, it didn't seem like entirely necessary it was just there to artificially ramp up the tension and and amounted to a big huge gigantic pile of jack shit <laughs> it was a waste of time in other words yeah as i said and so that makes me feel like the whole ending like the whole thread of the week the whole thread of the episode and the whole ending <sighs> was kind of unearned and i was not invested in, in it at all because it was so contrived and then uh the ending where Riker goes to meet minuet and it's not her why like the binaries made i know that they made minuet specific to distract Riker, but like they made these enhancements Oh, in the holodeck. Like, in fact, they were supposed to be long-lasting, and that's why they said it was supposed to explain why the characters were acting the way they were in The Big Goodbye. Um, so why did they undo what they did with Minuet? Why did they erase her program? Like, wouldn't she, her program, still be there? <laughs> but if, again, it's kind of plot contrivance, so Riker can be sad at the end. Oh, she's not there anymore. It's not the same thing. And, and just because if she was still there, then he might, like, end up having a long-term relationship with the hologram, which is a whole nother bag of worms. And, of course, we can't have any serialization in Star Trek, can we? It's kind of be completely white by the end of the episode, so... Yeah, that's why that happens. Anywho. <laughs> um, I guess I should talk about, like, Data and Jordy. Like, the whole plot of him teaching, Jordy teaching Data to paint. Now, I, this will become a long-term running thing with Data painting, and I do appreciate that. I didn't, I didn't particularly care for it that much in this episode. Um... I don't know, it didn't seem sort of in character for Data. but And then Wesley was on the bridge because... Well, surely there was an ensign available to be on the bridge. Why are they having Wesley, who's not even a full ensign, running the bridge? Granted, they're in Starbase, and there's nothing going on except for repairs, but still. You think there should be a lieutenant or ensign coordinating the repairs? Just, just my humble suggestion. And, um... We get the first mention of Parisi Squares, which again was also mentioned in Future Imperfect. Uh, so that's another thing that I recognize from Future Imperfect when I watch this episode. Apparently this they don't play baseball and they don't play basketball, any sports we know, so they make up a futuristic sport. Uh, Parisi Squares, which apparently, according to Future Imperfect, is very dangerous to play. Like, young kids shouldn't be playing it. Um... And uh, Worf is going, you know, ready to beat the fuck out of the opposing team. And, and Yara's like, um, oh no, it was Commander Riker who said, oh, it's just a friendly game. And then Worf's like, well then, Commander, why keep score? Gotcha there, Commander Riker. <laughs> anyway, so that was kind of interesting. But then the thing about um, Data and um, the Forge calling to evacuate the Enterprise... Without, like, like Data makes one attempt to contact Riker and Picard. And then it's like, ah, fuck it. Um, they should have immediately figured out something was wrong when they couldn't contact Riker and Picard. He just assumed they were in the Starbase, but even if they were in the Starbase, they'd still be able to fucking contact them. So the fact that he couldn't get through to Picard and Riker should have been a huge red flag. But then again... A lot of the episode needs to happen. They all need to evacuate the Enterprise, leaving Riker and Picard alone. But I call bullshit on that, too. I don't think that's what they would have done. Just my humble opinion. I know some people may disagree with my logic there, but... I mean, I get it. The Enterprise, according to them, was about to explode in, like, five minutes. So they didn't really have time to log, log that all about. But... 
the fact that Data is the one who has to call for the evacuation, which he shouldn't be, it should be Riker Picard, and the fact that when they try to find them, there's no answer. I mean, what if they are on the Enterprise and and they're stuck there, and the Enterprise explodes? <laughs> I think they would put more. And they, of course, they wait to be like once Data and LaForge being back to the starbase, and then they talk to Yar and Worf and realize that you know Picard and Riker aren't there, and so then they start freaking out, and it was like, oh, we gotta go back and get them. It's like, no, there's not enough time. It's gonna explode. But again. They shouldn't have assumed they were in a starbase in the first place because they would have still been able to communicate with them even if they were in the starbase. So they should have been freaking out looking for them before. <laughs> they should have never left the Enterprise. But again, plot, plot, contrivance. We just want Picard and Riker on the ship. So, um, now is the time to thank my Patreon supporters for supporting me on Patreon. It is very much appreciated. It does help the channel thrive, help, the, help me continue this channel, which, I, yes, very indebted. So, uh, those who support me, give you a quick shout out. We have Francisco, Chuck Hooks, Kyrie091, Anthony D. Benedictus, Ricky Medijester, Joel Lavalls, Alessandro Migalicio, Norman Buckwald, Stephen Kennedy, Brenton Berg, Allison Fordyce, and Brandon Neil House. Thank you all so very, very much for your support. So we have a few patron comments for this episode. First comment is from Norman Buckwald, who says... It's too bad this is the only episode with the Binaris as I could have seen lots of potential well minus mentions in other series, but you know what I mean, Lord Dex or Legacy, here's a race you should cover. Given that, as this uh, uh, is season one, typically, Minuet is uh, the much more interesting uh, character as she was f the first more than ordinary holodeck character. And while maybe not sentient, also introduces the first hollow character romance. And it's Riker's story uh, that's more interesting. Given that, this episode is still mostly blah. Although, I guess, uh, more interesting than most episodes of the first two seasons of Enterprise. Two pairs of binars, thus four, out of ten. Alright, so next comment is from Ricky, uh, who says, I don't think this is a great episode, nor one of the worst either. To me, it's a meh episode. What I mean by that is I find the concept of these aliens extremely interesting. It's a shame they never came back in live action. I did think the execution of the episode suffered as it's mainly Riker talking to Minuet, which I personally found boring, and I and I did like that this would be referenced in Season 4, Episode Future Imperfect. Also, I didn't believe that these aliens would be that smart to hijack the Enterprise and almost get away with it. Uh, I also liked uh, the Picard and Riker scenes in the episode, especially in the near self-destruct sequence. So it could have been a good episode, but the result is very average. My rating is a 5 out of 10. Uh, next comment is from Brandon Neil Howes. Uh, let's say, I don't find the binars particularly interesting, and Riker's hooker fantasy goes on too long. How many other starships have the binars hijacked, I wonder? Does anyone else think that Commander Quintos looks like Jean-Luc Picard's brother from the Mary Universe? Minuet looks a lot like my cousin Jack in her early 20s. I'll give this episode an, <coughs> an extra point for Ron Jones' creepy music. Watch Future Imperfect instead of this episode. Three blind men teaching Android how to paint out of ten. Getting back to Ricky's comment said um, that the binary should appear again in live action. Have they appeared in the animation? Did they appear in lower decks as a deck? They may have like a background character, like in the background, or maybe Prodigy for that matter. I I wouldn't doubt it. Maybe they did, and I just missed this. Maybe they owned, they were on some planet. We see a couple binars. I don't remember, but yeah, it would be cool to see the, these aliens again. Unlike Brandon, I actually do find them interesting. Uh, and that's an interesting question: how many um, how many ships have they hijacked? <laughs> 
I, again, I would say probably none because they were doing it just because, the, you know, their world was in danger. But then again, their reasoning for hijacking the Enterprise is bullshit. They're like, oh, you might have said no. So maybe they came up with all this, the, all their faulty logic to hijack ships. And I think it's unfair to refer to Minuet as Riker's hooker fantasy. <laughs> I, think, I think she's more complex than that, but that's just <laughs> me. Anyway, my rating for 11001001 out of 10. You know what? Before I started this review, I was stuck between a 5 and a 6. And I thought, well, as I do the review, because this happens a lot as I do my review, I end up, like, as I'm talking, I ended up talking myself into an either higher or lower rating because I fixate on how either bad or how good the episode is. But that actually, I don't know, that didn't really happen to me here. Um, I guess I'm going to go with the lower one, the five uh, average, uh, which is what the, which, yeah, that's what Ricky gave it a five. Norman gave it a four and Brandon gave it a three. So all pretty low in this episode. I think five is, yeah, five makes sense. Six maybe is a little too generous to it um, because of all the contrivance and the contrivance didn't annoy me because I like the interactions as I said between Minuet and Riker and that's what and the binars I think are cool so that's what almost made me go with the six but I'll go as high as a five it's not a terrible episode but yeah the, it's, the contrivance is, is like the binars plan sucks and it's stupid and it makes no sense and it's just contrivance so they can have a threat episode so they i do have to knock it down for that so yeah i'll give it a five out of ten um so that's it for my review of uh this episode which i'm sick of saying because the title is so hard to say um anyway uh coming up next on my channel uh next wednesday will be the first two episodes of ahsoka which i will be covering in one really excited for that friday i'm back with another tng review for too short a season and then monday another fresh TNG review with When the Bow Breaks. So that's what's coming up on my channel. Be sure to check out my channel uh, for that. And as I cover many uh, other Star Trek videos and many other videos and many other shows as well. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>